大家好，这里是听广播学英语频道。学会说不，为什么这很重要？今天的这个节目讨论了说不的重要性，这样做的挑战，以及在说是和否之间明智平衡的必要性。好了，我们来听听专家的建议吧。Think about this. Our brains change. Memory is an amazing. What you think is in there. Our brains aren't really finished. They're not our fully cooked yet. Our, our you go with your heart. You we don't have any heart. idea why we're, we're doing so most smart. of the things that we're doing. But here's the deal: society these days is often much more focused on opportunity than on opportunity cost. I'm Art Markman. I'm Bob Duke. I'm Rebecca McEnroy, and this is Two Guys on Your Head. Today, saying no. Whenever you choose to do something, the time. Money, energy that you spend on that is now unavailable for anything else you might have been doing, and so it's important to weigh the choices that you make against the things you could have done with that same set of resources. Yeah, and you know, I, there there is、um, an enthusiasm for encouraging people to strike out and try new things and say yes, but that often gets. Over translated <laughs> into saying always say yes. Well, as Art points out, the idea of opportunity cost is an important one because many people who are trying to say yes to everything have stretched themselves to the point of living a very stressful and unsatisfying life. And the thing that makes that difficult is because it, now you have people who have been advising you. To say yes to everything, and now you've said yes to a lot of things, and now none of it is really satisfying. So this show today is about the importance of saying no judiciously. Yes, and we need to point out up front: it's actually hard to say no, and particularly hard for people who are high in the personality characteristic of agreeableness. Because if you're high in agreeableness, then your goal motivationally. Is to get along with other people, and in the moment when you say no to a request that someone has made, then they don't like you as much as they did right before you said no,、mm -hmm. because you are not helping them to achieve some goal that they had, and so a lot of people, particularly agreeable folks, are prone to say yes to things that they ought to say no to, not just because they. Want to do it, but because they they know somebody else wants this thing to happen. Exactly. I think all the people who find themselves in situations they don't want to be in, this often happens not because you didn't have an opportunity to avoid that situation, but this you didn't know or didn't feel comfortable saying no. I'm not actually going to do that. And and we've talked about in many different circumstances on many different shows. The importance of locus of control, and if in your life experience you're finding yourself sort of at the mercy of invitations, <laughs> that I can't say no to an invitation. So if somebody asks me to do something for them or do something with them or whatever, I'm not willing to say no when I really don't want to do it. Well, then I'm going to find myself often in situations where I'm spending. Sometimes large stretches of time, someplace where I don't want to be with people I don't want to be with, doing things I don't want to be doing. Yeah, and and so、mm -hmm. one of the things that this means is you have to empower yourself to say no, and you have to practice doing it. I mean, we've talked on lots of shows about the importance of practicing things, and and one of the things that you have to do, particularly if you're on the agreeable end of the personality spectrum, is to say no to things and then realize the world did not end. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 not only did you survive that experience, but in all likelihood, the relationship with the individual you said no to also survived that experience. Yeah, and so it is okay to protect your time, your 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 own personal needs over those of other people. Yeah, it's important to. To think about the fact that when we're talking about saying no, this is something quite different from coming up with some excuse. So rather than saying no, I'd rather not saying no. I can't because whatever the can't is, right? Because that's that's not saying no. That's just lying.、Yeah. <laughs> and and I and I think one of the things that that often happens is again whether it's agreeableness or whatever the motivation is. I don't. I want to spare someone else's feelings. I don't want to. Don't want them to think that I'm not willing to do this. Whatever. And so we make up excuses about why we 
can't do it. And I want to emphasize that one of the things that Art's mentioning when he's talking about practicing, it's not practicing coming up with better lies, but it's practicing being comfortable saying no without any explanation necessary. And a very important thing people can do is to give themselves time when, when a request has been made of them, particularly in the workplace, for example. You, you get a request from someone, uh, your initial inclination is to respond right away. And, and particularly if you're, if you're somewhat agreeable or if the individual who's asking is someone that you'd like to impress in some way, your initial reaction might be, okay, well, I, I, I need to say yes to this. And, and that may be true. In the end, you might need to say yes to it. There's a certain number of things that, that we all get asked to do in life that, that we say yes to because we really do have to say yes. But that doesn't mean you have to say yes immediately. We, we are often in circumstances, either in an employment situation or some other kind of professional relationship, whatever, where we really don't have the option. But this gets back to the very basic thing about locus of control, is understanding where do we have the option to choose and when don't we. So it, it isn't to say that, well, you should just tell your boss, no, I'm, I really don't feel like doing that thing. But... But there are circumstances where we think, if I feel like I have no options to choose in any part of my life, that's pretty devastating, right? And all of us who have different jobs with different levels of responsibility and different levels of hierarchy about who answers to whom about what, uh, even with the most you know directed kind of jobs, there are opportunities in life, however small they might be, to be able to say, yes, I choose to be here and do this, but I don't choose to do that. But mm -hmm. when you feel like, whether it's because you tend to be agreeable or whatever it happens to be, that you never get to make those choices, either at work or in your personal life, that's a pretty miserable existence because you find yourself always being at the service of somebody else's feelings or their commands because you work for them or whatever it ha happens to be. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and, and, and so... If you find yourself always saying yes, that's a problem. And if you find yourself always saying no, that's yeah, a problem. Exactly. And and really what we're suggesting is that 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 we need to we need to find a way to balance these and that and that generally speaking, at least in this culture at this time, people are more prone to say yes when maybe they should have said no than the reverse. Yeah. Next week, we'll talk about how to overcome writer's block with Dr. Art Markman and Dr. Bob Duke. David Alvarez is our engineer, and I'm Rebecca McEnroy. I produce Two Guys in Her Head at KUT Radio in Austin, Texas. <laughs>